Hey everybody, welcome to the Trey Angle. My name is Trey Martinez. I'm super excited to be the host and be here in general to be able to give you insights, uh, a lot of tips and what I call the little angles to help you overcome, help you get that edge in whatever you're doing and and maybe do something that we're uncomfortable, maybe overcome those fears or uh, whether that's just something in, in, in your personal life or business just becoming a better person and using these strategies in your life. So again, super blessed to be here. This is Trey from The Trey Angle. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I've got a special guest all the way from AZ. We got Nick coming in live with you. What's going on, Nick? What's happening, man? It's good to be on here. Yeah, so this is cool because we connected on Instagram and in this pandemic world, it's a lot easier to connect to people on Instagram because we're all on our phones and we're not out and about like, uh, like we can be. But this is what's great about social. Um, but yeah, I saw what you're doing. And um, I'll say this. One of the first things I saw was your, your check from Gary Vee, and I was pretty pumped about it. <laughs> so we'll get into that. Um, but man, Nick, I mean, you've done a lot uh, with, at, at your young age and um, it kind of reminds me of a lot of people that I know and a lot of people who want to get into situations like yours, running a, an agency uh, with Instagram and doing a lot of big things with the YouTube, YouTube advertising and that type of agencies as well. Um, and then all the other projects that I probably don't even know of, but you've been into a lot of things. Um, I would consider you one of the influencers online on Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. So just want to say thank you for jumping on, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I really enjoy these type of conversations. Absolutely. So I, uh, I, I really want to hear, I mean, I know we're talking right before you're selling candy bars, you know, and I remember at my school, if I sold candy bars, I'd get in trouble. Um, <laughs> they didn't, they, they like pushed down entrepreneurship, I guess. But um, tell me how, how your journey has led you to, uh, you know, kind of where you are today, you know, um, I guess first to hear from you, you know, what do you do? And then we'll go back to there. How about that? Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So I've been a, I always kind of say I just I've been an online entrepreneur that's I've been doing this kind of stuff for about a decade and um, I've done a variety of things I started in the affiliate marketing space did that for a while and then I started diving into some info marketing which was kind of the next evolution in my opinion on on affiliate marketing mm -hmm. uh, I, I started Instagram growth agency then I really started to dive into paid advertising mm -hmm. started on Facebook and Instagram but then I saw a big opportunity on YouTube uh, and that's kind of where we bring it here. Uh, over the last year, year and a half, I've really dove deep. I work with an agency based out of the UK, and we, uh, yeah, we work with a lot of high ticket uh, coaches, course creators, and consultants. That's awesome. Yeah, you're telling me you have spent an easy million dollars in ads, which is insane. Um, <laughs> but hey, real quick before we dive into it, what do you think of LinkedIn ads? You think that's a new little market? I'm hearing, I'm hearing buzz around it. If it's for your that, yeah, it's interesting because uh, I, you know, full transparency, I've never, I haven't even touched um, LinkedIn ads. In fact, I'm not, I'm not too versed in LinkedIn as a whole. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is I, I've, I recently did test it out. I tested out some automation, and I know that the client tell on LinkedIn is just a little bit different than the other social platforms. Right. And then the other thing that I heard is that. LinkedIn ads are considerably more expensive, mm -hmm. but you know, with that said, with the people that are on LinkedIn versus the all the people that are on Instagram, it just seems like it's a little bit higher level, higher quality type of lead, especially if it's B two B stuff. True, yeah, different market. So, but I just wanted to ask that question. You know, I thought be you'd be the perfect one to ask. <laughs> um, so cool. Um, with that said, you know, you're hold on, do we lose you? You with us? Cool. So um, I thought I'd ask you because, you know, you're, you're kind of the Instagram and not just Instagram, just digital ads expert, you know, so that's that's a quick question I want to ask for myself. But OK, cool. Going back into early entrepreneurship, you know, you said this has kind of been ingrained into you. What has that evolution been like going from, um, you know, where you are now, but where did it start? Yeah, well, when you asked me that before we even got on, I, I, for some reason, I've been thinking about that recently. Because I, the, the older I get, I realize how, how much your upbringing 
has a strong influence on your life. Yep. So I was just thinking about my upbringing and I'm very grateful for my upbringing. My parents were amazing. They're a great family. And um, both my parents were entrepreneurs. Uh, and I think it was just kind of ingrained in me, and which was you know, fortunate for me. So I remember I was a baseball player all my life through college. And when I started out, they had this contest for our baseball team. Whoever sold the most candy bars or sold like the top five people in the league, whoever uh, sold the most got to go to the Rockies game. I lived in Colorado. So we'd go to the Colorado Rockies game. You'd get this bat bag and it had your name embroidered on it. Oh, wow. Whatever. And I just, yeah. So it was like, if, once I'm incentivized, once I like, I see something I want, it, I usually just, they get, no, there's no turning back. I got to just, I just do it. So I didn't really care. I just grabbed my box of candy bars and I walked down the street and I sold them all. And my sister was doing the same thing. And she's like, I don't want to do this. And I just grabbed hers and I went and sold it all and took a cut. So I'm like, <laughs> so when I see something that I want, I usually go after it. And uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough to have that kind of stuff ingrained in me. That's all. Did you win, man? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's super cool. I actually remember doing that stuff. And even my sisters, they had like Girl Scout cookies. And yeah, I, I can remember those conversations when they did not want to go door to door or anything like that, uh, show up at like our grocery store and sell. So that's, that's awesome. Makes me think of like some Gary Vee stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, cool, man. Um, so, you know, growing into that, you said you went into, you know, the affiliate marketing space and, and uh, you know, now into digital ads. What I think is so crazy is our demographic has seen a completely different side of entrepreneurship compared to, you know, our parents because we have the internet. So you said you brought up a cool point. I never thought of it. I think you said internet entrepreneur or internet marketer. Uh, yeah. That's a cool term because it's true. That's really what it is. I, I mean, I got into, I guess, technically a business whenever I was 18, but it's because I saw the opportunity online. You know, I can leverage somebody else's work and like you do, would do with affiliate marketing and sell their products, right? Um, what was, do you have an aha moment or do you remember the exact time whenever you found out about affiliate marketing? Yeah. So I was, so where it kind of started was when I was just about to graduate college mm -hmm. that finally realized that I wasn't going to play baseball forever. <laughs> and so then I was like, all right, well, I don't want to work for anybody. So I started like looking and seeing online. And I was, I was pretty naive when I came online. I was like, oh, I Googled how to make money online, which is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy way to fall down these rabbit holes of these products. People saying, hey, buy this, buy this. This, you know, be rich. Okay. <laughs> I'll buy all of them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just uh, so that kind of just started that like opened my eyes a little bit. None of that stuff I bought was good whatsoever. I, yeah, it was a mess. Yeah. But then like it just kind of opened the doors for me. And I'm, I'm grateful that I went through that process. I'm grateful that I bought a bunch of scammy products. You started. <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of I kind of put it to the wayside for a while because I was finishing up college and then I ended up moving back in with my parents, which wasn't crazy about, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. And somehow I, I started doing foreign, foreign exchange currency trading. Wow. And so I was doing that for a little bit, but I just, uh, it was, my schedule was all out of whack. You had to wake up at like 6am and then there was another, like I would be at, up at 1am. I would stay up. Until, yeah. It was just a mess. I was, I always, I was so tired and I was just like, ah, oh, I didn't love it. But like when I was trading, I would, be like listening to youtube videos mm -hmm. of honestly a lot of music videos i was just listening because i was like trying to entertain myself right and then I, every once in a while i'd see like it wasn't even ads so much it was just like i i saw the related videos and then there's this one there's this one girl that was just showing off her bank account or, or her commissions account and i was like what is this mm -hmm. so i kind of got back into that that's what kind of got me back into affiliate marketing mm -hmm. so i like I kind of started into it and then I fell off and then I, but I think it's just like, what I always say is you're kind of bit with the entrepreneur bug. Like once you have it, that, that thing's never going away. True. And it's just a matter of if you want to really pursue it or sit back and just always kind of wonder. Wow. Yeah, that's good. It's either you suppress it or you, you act on it. 
Yeah. I like that. Um, so, okay. You got into the, you got into this world. Um, and it was funny cause yeah, we're talking about, you know, business that we both knew about and, um, that's how I got started. So, okay. You get into affiliate marketing. When did you get your first win? Like what was your first win that you'll forever remember? Oh, I remember it. I remember to the day I died. So <laughs> I, uh, I was doing all sorts of different things. My, you know, my, my, my friends or my mentors were telling me, Hey, do this, do this. And it was like, even back then it was like post on Craigslist. <laughs> yep. Like, I, I did it. Yep. So I started doing that. I started getting some leads. I was like, okay, this is cool. But it just, it wasn't, it didn't seem like my, the method that I wanted to go. It just didn't seem sustainable and seemed very time intensive and just posting these weird ads on Craigslist seemed kind of strange. Uh, so what I realized and, I was thinking about it at the time it even made sense to me is like when I got into this industry it was because I saw a YouTube video I was like well that kind of makes sense like you just make a YouTube video and then you talk about stuff and then you tell people to go click on your link in the description and then they go buy it I mean that's exactly what I did why couldn't I flip it and be the one making the videos right so it just kind of made sense to me and I started to make some videos I started getting a little bit of traction and then uh, I just decided like I was kind of getting frustrated because I was making videos. I was making videos about personal development and you know some books that I was reading. But then I kind of, I was like, well, how do I make this a little bit more effective? And I started making review videos. That's what one of my mentors told me, like review this product and then talk about it, give value. And then say, tell them at the end that, if, you know, if you want to go check out more what I'm doing, then go check out the link. In my direction, right. Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of an interesting model. I think some people can get carried away with that and really do a lot of bait and switch type of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, when I heard that, I was like, okay, that makes sense. So I just like went ham and there was a, it was kind of in a little accountability group that I was in and this girl that was in there, I was like, Hey, do you want to, do you want to like just go hard today? And we're like, all right, yeah, let's make five videos today. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let's, let's do it. So we did it and we posted all the videos. It was like a couple of days later, all of a sudden this girl hit me up on Facebook out of nowhere. I was like, who is this? And then all of a sudden I got a commission with the same name on there. And I was like, what? First dollar online, baby. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was hilarious because my, my, mom, my mom was in the kitchen and I was like, mom, look, I made $20. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't much by any means, but it was just that and finally the the belief shifted because you see all these people making money and, and doing their thing you're like okay cool for them but until you really go out there and have that experience yourself it, it, it just doesn't quite click over wow that's awesome so what happened did you stop making videos oh man i just went ham with videos <laughs> i probably i don't even know how many at this point probably close to two thousand videos online i would have to say no way oh my gosh i was going through you know your youtube channel but man that's serious dude that's commitment yeah thanks man so it was interesting too because back in the day you would you, you wouldn't have just one main youtube channel at least the way i was learning it you would have all these different channels so i think across the years i probably have 60 youtube channels really wow <laughs> yeah so then i started just being a little bit more dedicated towards one probably like three, four years ago. And that's the one that you probably saw. Right. Wow. That's crazy, dude. That's amazing. So I got to ask, you know, of course you get your first check, right? You know, you get that $20, but you're not making, you're not making enough money to pay your rent. You know, you're not making, like you said, uh, you, you got out of college, went home. That's what I did. I dropped out of college, went home to my parents' house. Wasn't very happy about it either. I'm like, okay, I got to get out of here. So you're making all these videos and I don't know if this was a thought process for you, but it, I can see it being in my world. So that's why I can see, okay, I'm making these videos. I made, let's say $200, $500. That's great. But dude, I need to, I want to get out of here. I want to exponentially grow. Did you have that experience? And if so, what was your, what was your thought process? What was like your conversations with yourself like to help you get across the line? Yeah, I would say a few things is like, yeah, the $20 was as cool as a big win, but then I was like, okay, well, how do I, how to make this bigger? How do I make this better? And probably one, one big epiphany was 
rolling into the high ticket realm where it's like, instead of selling a product for $20, why don't I sell a product for $2,000? Mm. Right. So it's just, and it, 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 it's really interesting. And the whole psychology behind that, because especially when you're selling your own products of something that you truly believe in, it's almost kind of doing a disservice when you're selling stuff for a low price point, huh. because one is there's a higher perceived value when it's something that's more expensive. Right. Uh, it also forces you to put more value in it instead of just trying to discount it and sell it more. Uh, and then also it's, it also does a disservice to you, the client if it's a lower price point and stick with me here, but it, it makes sense. And I had a real big epiphany from some of my friends. So if someone pays $20 for your product and again, I do mostly info stuff. So it's more of like transformational stuff and training. Mm -hmm. But if someone pays twenty dollars for it, what's what? In all, in all honesty, what's the likelihood that someone's actually going to go through that, consume all the information, and then go take action on it? Like we we'd like to think that it's Everybody. yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, maybe even fifty percent. It's probably around three percent, five percent, maybe. Wow. I mean, especially if you're just driving traffic to a sales page and. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know that most people don't go through it. They did some study. I forget exactly what the numbers are, but it, it is ridiculously low. Wow. So one, people don't value it as much. So when people put more skin in the game, they actually value product more. They'll take action on it more and they'll actually get better results. Dude, that's big. That's so crazy because, you know, and in in what I've learned in the internet world and in funnels and stuff like that, you know, especially when you, when I look into Russell Brunson, I'm a big Russell Brunson fan and seeing his ascension ladder, right? There is a value ladder. It starts off with that low ticket, but that makes me think of some guys like, have you heard of Stephen Larson? Yep. Yeah. So Steve, he, he kind of said something like that. It just, you registered it in a completely different way where he says, start with that middle one. One, because like you said, it's more perceived value. But I never thought of it being like in regards to not just conversions and people buying it, but in people going through it. I've never thought about that. That's that's powerful. That makes you want to actually build a high ticket product because you really want to. I mean, you want you're not doing this just to make money. You want to provide a result for somebody, right? Yeah. So what happened when that, whenever you did that? Well, let me, I want to tell you a crazy story about that. Cause when my mind shut, really shifted on that. So I have some buddies that live here in Scottsdale. They're amazing entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they had a program where they were, and it's funny cause it was a few years ago in the same apartment complex. They used to live here. They, they moved to a different one now, but I actually film, I helped film their sales video. Nice. And they were selling a subscription based. It was, I want to say $97 a month or something like that. They did that for a while. The conversions weren't very high, what they wanted. And then they actually, they were selling it for maybe like 200 bucks, something like that. And they're doing okay, making five, 10 K a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they hired, have you heard of traffic and funnels? Yeah. Yeah. So they hired, they got into their mastermind and pretty much the only, the, the one big thing that they got out of that was raise your prices. So they went from whatever they were at $200 or whatever to two, three grand. And they shifted from making five, 10 K a month to every month I talk to them, it's, it's next, it's, but they went up to hundred K real quick. They went up 200 K real quick. And I think they're probably at a million, million a month right about now. I haven't talked to them in a little while, but wow. they're right around that range. And like, of course they're, they're innovating and making their product better and better every day. But they said the biggest shift in the world was just raising their prices and not just because they're making more money, but their clients were actually winning a lot better. The people that were paying $200, they were like, they were excited about being in their program, but they weren't getting results. Now, every other day they get a new person, 50 K a month, 60 K a month, 70 K a month. Like it's, it's absolutely insane. The growth and I'm really excited for them, but it's just like, that was such a big epiphany that I realized was like, not only can you make more money, but you can have a better impact and and inspire more people too, like we talked about before. Wow. So that's why I really believe in high ticket. And I, I totally agree with the Russell Brunson stuff of like you can have the low ticket stuff, 
but you just have to understand that that's generally going to attract a lower quality buyer. Mm-hmm. It's just to get them in. Yeah. yeah which it, it works because I, there's a, I have a mentor. I actually ended up joining his mastermind a couple of years ago and I, I bought one of his first things for, it was like an audio book for $7. So it can work. I'm not saying it doesn't, but right. It, it was just a long, it's a, it can be a long ascension ladder if you start with a really small product. Yeah, and, and I, I know it works. I mean, I think we all know that those little tickets do work, but whenever you correlate it to the actual results somebody gets, that, that's a game changer. I've never, I've never tied those two together. If anything, I see the conversion as conversion rates of somebody joining mm-hmm. and buying the $20 or the $7 or whatever it is, compared to something bigger, but I think that it puts you in the frame of, of really creating value for the end user. Yep. Yeah, and, and it, exactly to your point, because if someone buys a $7 product and then they don't really take action on it, they're probably not gonna become a raving fan of yours. The only way people become raving fans and repeat buyers is if they go through your product, it works for them, they love it, and then they refer all their friends and they buy more of your stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you're selling something for $7 and it just doesn't get them to take action, it's, it actually is hurting your profits even down the road. Yeah, golly, that's great. Okay, so you make the shift. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, off to the races you go, huh? Well, the other thing too is, that especially just as I jumped into the paid advertising world, it just, sometimes you literally can't do low ticket otherwise you're taking a hit hmm. especially on on google and google and youtube on the same network right uh, because it's just a little bit more expensive traffic and we've tried different low ticket stuff even with the agency i'm working with right now we we're doing a, a 67 dollar uh, video editing software and it just the numbers just didn't make sense so that's kind of it was almost like yeah i had that big epiphany but i was also forced to go into high ticket because otherwise you, you just going into the hole every time right wow so okay so now you you know like you said before working with um you started your own agency um you're doing youtube big time um you you've seen some success and one of them being this gary v now i have to hear the story on this this gary v deal because that's so sweet i don't know anybody who's done it <laughs> Yeah, it was really crazy because uh, that was when I so I was doing my Instagram growth agency. I had a software that we had that basically did the kind of like follow and follow stuff. It's not the greatest strategy in the world, but it does work. And I was getting my clients' results. Um, and so I was really growing my platform and just like, really working hard on content and making sure I was putting good stuff out. And then I got an email from them and it said something at, at VaynerMedia. And I was like, what? what is it this is not like, no. <laughs> this is a scam or something some nigerian scam um, <laughs> sorry to anybody if anybody's from nigeria i just associate that um yeah they sent me an email and then they're like hey we're, we're interested in you know doing some type of collaborations with you um and i was like okay well i sent some stuff back and i just emailed back they're like all right we'll send you a questionnaire and ask you if you want to do it so basically how it worked was they hired me to be a basically a what do they call it creating just creating content for them so at first it was uh it was an it was for because so we worked with their clients so one of the clients was johnny walker and the other client was nascar so they had me go out to the nascar event that was in phoenix which i've never been to a nascar event it was really interesting but they just had me you know make take take some pictures or I actually did a video, video and pictures. And then the Johnny Walker one actually never, we never ended up doing that one. They canceled kind of at the last minute. So it wasn't anything crazy big, but you know, getting that check was definitely a a cool moment. I still need to frame it. Yeah, I think you should, because the thing is that regardless of of how big the check was or, or anything, it's like, you got it done. And that's not something a lot of people can say, but even more so is the fact that um, just with the power of social media, I mean, they found you because of the content that you put out and you just, you just put yourself out there, right? That is just so 
to me, that is so awesome. That's like the, you know, the new modern American dream in a sense, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. sweet. So I got, yeah, absolutely. I got to ask, um, as you've gone through all this, you know, obviously, you know, you're young and we're, we're all young and most people listening are too. What would you say was the, was a big revelation um, that you've learned personally through this whole growth? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, um, that kind of leads me up to a point because you were asking me before, like anything really took you down low. Right. And I'd, I'd love to share this story because this is kind of, I feel where Nick was reborn. Wow. Okay. Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so about a, when was it now? It's coming off like a year and a half, uh, a year ago from November, I was in a really bad spot. Uh, I had, I was dealing with a breakup very poorly, uh, just kind of lost sight of my business. Things weren't going well with that financially, just everything. It just seemed like for the first time in my life, I felt very stressed and anxiety ridden that I've never experienced in my life before. And it was just tough to deal with. And it was, it was mainly because of the breakup and it was just a tough situation, a lot of different intangibles, but just wasn't not handling it well. And, uh, so I was in a low spot for sure. And I went to go visit my family. My sister lives in Virginia. I thought it would be good for me to get out there, get out of Arizona for a while. Right. But that wasn't, it didn't really make me feel any better. I was still just kind of in the trenches. So, was and so I came back, I was coming back from Virginia. My parents still live in Colorado. So I was hanging out with them for a couple of days. And I knew that I didn't feel amazing about coming back to Arizona. It just reminded me of everything. And so the one thing that was going well in my life was my fitness. I was actually working on just getting stronger and I felt really good. And there was this one day when I was in Colorado, it was the day before my flight back to Arizona, I was lifting, I was doing barbell bench, which I didn't normally do, but I decided I was feeling strong and maybe a little ambitious that day. I'm lifting and all of a sudden I'm like last rep, and trying to put the weight back on and it just something happens. I don't know what happened. And the weight just falls back on my chest. I lose all strength in my arm. And I'm like, what is going on? And then someone that helped me get the rack back up and I was like excruciating pain in my left, my left shoulder here. And what turns out what happened was I tore my pectoral tendon. Oh my gosh. I've seen it. I've seen it done firsthand. Oof. It's like you sit, it's, it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So yeah. Yeah. So that was really crazy, but I'm 1000% grateful for that it happened because you're, you're asking these dips, these low points that brought you, what were they and what was the lesson and how did you come out of them? Well, I realized cause I was, I was, <laughs> I was bawling my eyes out cause I was just, everything finally came out. I was just like, Cause I, I, that's kind of, uh, like my Achilles heel where I, I keep things bottled up a lot and something I'm continuing to work on more and more, yeah. but it was like <laughs> something released when, when it tore, you know, something had to give. Wow. And so I was just, we're on the way to the emergency room and my mom was like, what is going on? It's Cause I, I can handle physical pain. That's not like, I, I do pretty well with that. Mm -hmm. so I'm just crying and bawling my eyes out. And she's like, what is going on? Like, is it, is it physically painful? Mm -hmm. and I just remember myself saying this. I'll never forget this. I said, when it rains, it pours. Mm -hmm. And I hated that. I said that mm -hmm. I hated that. I said that because that, showed me truly where my mentality was at. That's where my mindset was. Of course, this would happen to me. Poor me. I'm a victim. Yep, that was a story that you're telling yourself. Yeah, exactly. And so it was interesting because it was almost after, like, it wasn't, it was like that same day. I, it was like, oh my gosh, this is a mess. I didn't have health insurance. I don't know what was going to happen. We had to go get an MRI. I was paying everything out of pocket. Like, what is, I don't know what's going on. This is a really bad situation, but something in me told me that this was supposed to happen and this was actually going to be a really good thing. And wow. so I had surgery. I, that was on a Friday night. So I stayed in Colorado, ended up staying in Colorado for three, four months, rehabbing, had surgery that next Monday was in a 
cast like this yeah for a few months i was sleeping on a uh recliner for like two like a month <laughs> wow and uh yeah i just i really started working on myself and i'm so thankful for my mom because she kind of whipped me into shape a little bit and because even after the fact i was still kind of had an attitude and she's like you know you have a choice to do right now you can either continue to lay in this this pity party or you can make a decision to make yourself better hmm. good mom oh yeah mom's mom's legit rock. <laughs> so i i just realized and i, I the next one after she kind of sat me down and said that the next day i was like you're absolutely right and i just took ownership of it i realized i wasn't working on myself i wasn't reading i wasn't listening to audios i wasn't I just wasn't doing the work and that's what got me there and wow. so the next day i woke up early i'm not an early riser by any means but got up at 5 30 that next morning and i started reading and i started really dedicating myself and i just told myself and i knew that morning i something shifted in me and i said i'm gonna like you no know, as long as i keep doing this as long as i keep betting on myself and believing in myself and proving to myself that i am an action taker and a person that bets on himself everything's gonna be good like I was sitting there with a like, oh. cast and not uh, just yeah, not in, if someone's looking they're gonna be like yeah right but you you believed it and that's all that matters yeah I knew everything was gonna be good and I I just kept telling myself that every day and I kept telling myself that I was thankful that this happened everyone was asking me about it and they're like oh I'm so sorry that happened I was like I'm happy this happened I'm ecstatic that it happened and I just kept putting that vibration out and I just kept seeing little things start, start like, as my friend uh, likes to call it, as little breadcrumbs from the universe. Mm. And they just little things that were showing me like I'm on the right track. It wasn't anything big and moment, momentous, but it just showed me I'm like, it's coming. Things are coming. Things are coming. And I haven't really looked back. I never will. That's awesome. Wow. So let's say someone's in that pit right now. What would you tell them? You're looking back at yourself. I say the biggest thing is, is that it's a choice. As much as you don't want to hear it sometimes and much as you don't want to admit it, you're exactly where you are because of the choices that you made up to that decision. And it's on you on what, what you want to do moving forward taking full responsibility. I, I hated that. I said that, that thing about when it rains, it pours, but again, that showed me that that's what led me up to that point is because I kept playing the victim mode. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not me. It's this, it's ex-girlfriend. It's business isn't going well. Oh, sales, whatever. They, like, I, I heard a really good piece of advice the other day. And I think this kind of relates exactly how I felt in that moment where I was like, all right, I'm at a low point, but I'm getting out of here. And it was, imagine that you are, you're, um, you're in the movies. You're, you're in a movie where the, the character is a piece of shit, you know, <laughs> just struggling. And, but just say, Hey, like, I'm struggling. I'm in a bad situation, but I'm going to get out of it. And by the end of this, I'm going to be on top and it's going to be an amazing story. And I also say, like, there's a big thing, because I'm obviously very into personal development, but I think it's big on who do you listen to, like what they call a teachability index. It's like, how teachable are you and who are you listening to? And I would strongly recommend that you listen to and apply the things that the people that are having the results that you want are doing and saying. Mm -hmm. And more so doing. Because... Mm -hmm. People can, there's a lot of people talking online. There's a lot of people talking everywhere, but what are they doing? And are they getting the results that you want? Have they been through the same type of process that you've gone through? Like really find someone that you resonate with. That is the real deal. That's not just talking and is more so proving that they are legit. Uh, follow them because it's all about like your input equals your output. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm never going to forget uh, 18 years old or 19 hearing Jim Rohn's uh, quote, the five people you hang around to see you become. And uh, just your environment. If, if you have a shitty environment, you're going to have a, you're, you're, or shit, uh, 
yeah, it's like the input. You're not going to be putting out a lot into the world. So that's great. Yeah, it's always such a good reminder. And um, something else that you you reminded me of is no one's here to save you. That's something I've heard in the past like 60 days. No one is going to save you. No. People will try their ass to save you. They will. Some may even die if you got some really good friends. But like you said, it doesn't matter what anybody was telling you. You had to make that decision for yourself of, okay, I, I have to get myself out of here. And it's, it's once you make that decision, um, you'll stay in that pit. So, man, that's awesome, man. I love hearing that. So obviously you got a lot of great things going. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, you've got some, some cool, super cool stuff going on with helping people actually learn and apply because something I like you said too is, and I, I was a huge, um, I guess, I don't want to say victim, but I was just this guy. I would be educating myself too much. You know, I'd be listening to everything. Um, I would just be the idea guy, right? I would have all these amazing ideas, but when it comes to executing them or it comes to applying, like you said, applying and doing, I wasn't doing it at the level I should have compared to the input I was getting, right? Mm -hmm. So um, talk about what you're doing now with, uh, with you know, helping people get an input, get better input for better outputs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I recently, because I, you know, I, as I mentioned, I love personal development. I love reading, but I found a problem and this was, it was really just a, a struggle for me, a challenge for me. Cause I wasn't, I've always loved learning, but I, I wasn't very good at reading. I was slow at it. Or I couldn't retain it very well. So I had to figure out how can I make this work? Cause I, I just want to, I want to read all the books. I want to go through all the courses yep. and there's so much more coming out every single day. How do you stay up with it? Mm -hmm. so I was like well this is this is just something I wanted to, to master I wanted I made it a personal mission and throughout this last year and a half that was part of the process and I always thought it was just applying this stuff so that I could you know you know do whatever to learn stuff to go apply but then I started realizing that so many people were having the same problem and so I started sharing that with my friends a little bit and how to speed up their reading how to retain better how to really learn how to how to really learn so, right. so many people don't know how to learn and how do you really consume stuff that it becomes a part of you so that therefore you can go out and take action on it? Because as you just mentioned, like it's great to consume stuff, but it's it doesn't do too much good unless you're actually going out there and applying it. And yeah. I think that's where personal development gets a bad rap is because there's a lot of people that are personal development junkies. Mm -hmm. I don't even consider them really personal development junkies. I consider them just non-action takers oh, so there's a, <laughs> someone who i love his name is garrett j white and he calls it mental masturbation <laughs> that's what you're doing man you're just playing with yourself because you're not acting on anything you know you're just using all these knowledge and uh, just just keep it in your head and, and not doing anything with it yeah so the program i, I actually just released it i've been sh I've been sharing it with a few friends and i had a few clients here and there uh, but I decided I really want to start pushing it out towards the masses. And so, yeah, I have it. It's called, I decided on a, a name. My roommate actually helped me come up with it, but it's called Brain Savvy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, ultimately, it's just helping people be a little bit more efficient with their learning process. And then once they really understand the learning process, how it really helps them, how they're able to really retain stuff and hold on to it and therefore take action on it. Once you have that all developed, then it's about just pushing the gas and going faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so cool. Because um, I, I remember being, I don't know, I haven't thought this in a long time, but it just, I was triggered somehow and I thought of this idea. So when I was a kid, I remember hearing stories of uh, a, a guy would have a note card with just a, a line split out. Like, this is more for reading, right? And he would say, you know, just point to, to one end and the other end, because you're it's just about your eyes going faster. Um, and I remember having a little note card. I didn't stick with it because I'm still I'm like you, you know, I can read, but I'm not the best reader either. Um, but that's so crazy because these little things, if we commit to them, I mean, man, I I can only imagine what some of your your clients and and students have picked up. Like, what can someone expect from from, from this whole process and program? 
Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people start from different places. One guy that sticks out to me, that I'm really excited about, he sends me messages very consistently. He used to, so he usually obtains his information through audio books and sometimes physical books, or sometimes he combines the two. Mm-hmm. But when he started, he was sitting at about one, one X speed, just regular speed. Mm-hmm. And just the other day, he said he was listening at 2.7 speed and he was consuming everything. It's funny too, because he's, He's mentioned it. Yeah, people, people he works around, he they come in, they're like, what are you listening to? It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's cool because he he comprehends it all and it just it sticks. And I think it's it's really just a matter of training your brain to really, you know, learn how to listen and and go at those spaces because our brains are very powerful and we are only scratching the surface at how powerful they are. And it's just, I think this is just the beginning. My vision for all of this is, have you seen the, the movie Limitless? Yeah. Yeah, with uh, Bradley Cooper. Yeah. I, I truly believe that if, if I can continue to learn and understand this information more and more and really expand my mind, I, I wanna make the, the natural way of the Limitless pill. I, I really think that's possible. So um, and that's you, kind and of some, might, some might say you, you can pull off a of Bradley Cooper too. You got the beard, got the hair, man. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if you can sing like, uh, like him with Lady Gaga, but, uh, you know, maybe that's the oh, next cool. course. <laughs> that, might, that might be where we draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. No, I, I think it's needed. Um, especially in a world where, you know, you're not, I don't feel like the education system is doing all it can. Not saying it's bad, just not doing all it's all it can. But something like this would be so amazing. Learning how to learn. So where can people find out about it? Yeah, uh, probably the best place is just connect with me on Instagram. Uh, my first name Nick, or my last name Arapkles, A R A P K I L E S. Um, yeah, I usually like to just have some conversations with people before um, before we even talk about it, just to kind of see where they're at, see if this is going to be something of of help for them. We. Well, man, I appreciate it, dude. This was awesome. This was fire. Seriously, hearing your story and um, man, he- hearing hearing you go through that pit that was that was powerful. And I hope everyone can get something from that because uh, because whenever you're saying it, I'm just I just have to have to say it. Um, like I'm a big believer. So whenever you were talking about the muscle was the only thing holding on. There's a verse in scripture. I don't know the exact. Uh, verse but it's basically your heart is stone turn it to flesh and it seems like your heart was stone and then you released it and you just felt flesh and you just felt all the emotions and everything and that's that was the power that helped you get across to making a change so dude that was powerful man so i appreciate you uh obviously much much uh success to you in the future and i believe you will help people become limitless man so thank you for being on Thank you, man. It was it was an absolute pleasure. Like I said before, I love having these conversations and it's just great to connect. And if we can help people watching, listening, uh, all the better. Absolutely, man. Appreciate it. Talk soon. All right, brother. Take care. How about that? Nick from AZ Iraq Piles. I believe I butchered his last name, but look him up. Everything he's got going on on social. I'll put his links and IG in the description, but I hope you took something from this. Being able to hear his testimonial and just his story and hearing his pit, hearing how he went through some hard times, but those hard times was exactly what shaped him to who he is today. And I'm sure he would tell you that he's not exactly where he wants to be, but hey, if he looked back from where he was, he'd be pretty damn proud of it. And I feel like that's the case for a lot of us. Uh, we so often, I at least speak for myself, so often just get stuck in a rut or not stuck, but just continuing to move forward without ever looking back to see how far I've came and uh, the journey that I've I've been on. And that also helps you become more in the moment and enjoying the moment. So I hope you really got something out of this. Uh, I'm liking where, where this is flowing. And again, if you're getting some value, some insight, let me know. Share this on Instagram. Share this on social. And uh, tell, me, tell me your favorite parts. Uh, I'd love to know more. I'd love to know what your insights were. I'd love to know how this has impacted you. And um, also, if you have a question, 
shout it out. Let me know. I'd love to to talk about it or get somebody who really knows it to talk about it. But uh, I hope you're enjoying this episode. And again, it's every Friday, Trey Angle Podcast is the goal of 2021. So excited for you to get some insights and excited for myself to learn them and share them. So hope you're doing awesome and have a blessed day.